Hello and welcome to another video to benefit EV University. This is one of my classes. Now at this point I have done all the core classes and I'm going to be teaching classes that have uh, that I just teach outside of the core classes. These are classes that either were requested or classes that I updated from a uh, mothball of classes that we have in our repertoire um, as teachers and so um, this one is an updated version of a class that we have on our eve wiki page um, our eve university wiki um, this is intro to wormhole mechanics And so we're going to be diving into the everything about wormholes and wormhole mechanics. Um, and this is an updated version of the one that you will find on our wiki. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think there's a few loose ends to tie up before this version becomes the version that you'll find on the wiki. Um, I... I updated this one so the version that you're seeing here is going to be updated um, or is updated and will hopefully one day be the version that gets uploaded to uh, the Eve University wiki um, but in the meantime if you have questions since this is not a live class, you can leave them as comments on the video and I will get to them as quickly as uh, possible. Uh, I will try to answer as many questions, but if I get a lot of questions on a particular video, I may not respond to all of them, but I'll do my best. So let's talk about wormholes. So we're going to talk about what wormholes are, how to find them, how they work. Uh, we'll talk about what is in wormhole space. We'll talk about what makes wormholes unique. We'll talk about uh, the unique things about uh, wormholes, such as mass limits, classes, types. Um, we'll talk about why people love wormholes and why you might love wormholes, even if you've never been inside a wormhole system before. We'll talk about the play styles that are enabled by wormhole systems. We'll talk about ISK earning opportunities, um, and we'll and you know we'll also talk about the variety that you get from wormhole space. So let's get into it. Um, I do want to uh, point out a couple of little bits and bobs here. Um, so in terms of terminology, JSpace, wormhole space, and wormhole system. These are systems found by passing through a wormhole system. Now, we'll get into it further, but not every wormhole takes you to wormhole space. However, there are systems that are unique to wormhole space that you can only access through a wormhole and that's what we're referring to when we talk about J space wormhole space or a wormhole system uh, you will sometimes hear people who live in wormhole space refer to the system as their hole or the hole um, that's just colloquial technically speaking a wormhole is a door or a gate and the space that you access through a wormhole is wormhole space. Um, there is, you will also hear me say K space. K stands for known, so we're talking about known space. These are the high sec, low sec, null sec systems that have names to them. And uh, a bit of trivia for you a third of all K space systems have a wormhole in them. There are no wormholes that collect, no wormholes that connect, excuse me, directly to JIDA, 
wormhole space is called J space because all but one system in J space is given a six digit number preceded by a J. So for example, um, you know, J115296 or something, you know, I just pulled that out of my pulled that out of my butt. But So, how do we find wormholes? Well, wormholes start out as cosmic signatures that must be scanned down in order to find them. Now, if you've never scanned down cosmic signatures before, I highly recommend you check out the Intro to Exploration video that I did, or attend one of our Intro to Exploration classes that we do on the regular, because we talk about how to... Uh, get into exploration. We talk about scanning down signatures. Um, cosmic signatures show up in your probe scanner window and you can scan them down. Once you scan them down, you can warp to them. Now, pro tip, and I'm probably going to say this a number of times throughout this uh, class, is when you find a wormhole, warp to it right then bookmark 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 the wormhole okay so right you know by default you can right click on the wormhole save location and name it whatever you want um you'll find that wormhole groups like people that live in wormhole space have you know systems for how they name bookmarks but you know that's beside the point just make sure that you bookmark the wormhole and if you do jump that wormhole um, be sure that you bookmark the other side as well so that you have both sides bookmarked and you want to make sure that you indicate which side is which okay So, when you jump inside, you're going to notice that things are different in a wormhole system. So, as you can see on this screenshot here, there is nothing there except the wormhole and the sun. Um, normally, when you jump into a K-space connection, you're going to see structures. You're going to see um, a bunch of random things in space. That is generally not what you're going to see when you jump into wormhole space. It's just going to be the sun and it's just going to be the wormhole that you just jumped. Okay. Just because it looks empty does not mean that it is. Now, in wormhole space, there are combat anomalies, which are the green sites. You can warp to those whenever, right? Those will show up on your probe scanner window. Um, same as in K-Space, if you're wanting to run combat sites, you just open up your probe scanner window and ta-da, there's your green sites. Um, the ore anomalies, on the other hand, have to be scanned down. In fact, just about everything in wormhole systems have to be scanned down in order to find them. So if you want to find, um, or sorry, not ore anomalies, ore anomalies, you can also work to. Those are green sites. Um, but everything else, such as gas sites, that was what I was thinking of. Gas sites, um, there are data and relic sites, both null data, right? So we refer to sites that don't have rats the kind that you find in null sec, low sec, and uh, high sec. We refer to those as null data and relic sites. Um, these are typical for new explorers to, to run. You can find those by scanning them down, right? 
same as case space and all that good stuff. Uh, gas sites you can find by scanning down. Everything else has to be scanned down in order to find it. There's a bunch of cool stuff in worms, wormhole space, but it all has to be scanned down because it shows up as a cosmic signature at first. All right. Now, wormhole space can seem kind of spooky, but there's actually a lot of information available to you, even if you don't know much about wormhole space. You can learn a lot just by checking out the information on the wormhole that you have scanned down. So, for example here, I have a screenshot here. You can see that this is the show info window. So when you right click and hit show info or you click that little, um, the little information button on your overview, this will bring up this box, right? And it's telling you a bunch of things about the wormhole and the system that's past this wormhole. Okay. Now it's in a bit of a code, right? So in order to decrypt it, we're going to go through this step by step. Okay. So underlined in red, the phrase is this wormhole seems to lead to unknown parts of space. This sentence tells us where this wormhole leads to. And we know that unknown parts of space means that it is a C1, a C2, or a C3. And we're going to talk about what C1, C2, C3 means as we get further along. Okay, we'll break that all down. So, if you see unknown parts, that's C1, C2, or C3. If it says dangerous parts, that's a C4 or a C5. Deadly parts means that it is a C6. Underlined in orange, the phrase reads, this wormhole is beginning to, day, to decay and probably won't last another day, which tells us the wormhole is fresh. Wormholes can last up to 24 hours, though not all of them do. When a wormhole is aged to the point where it will collapse due to how long it has been around, the phrase will say, this wormhole is reaching the end of its natural lifetime. Underlined in yellow, we have the phrase, this wormhole has had its stability reduced by ships passing through it, but not to a critical degree. In addition to wormholes collapsing because they get old, wormholes can also collapse due to how much mass passes through a wormhole. Every ship that goes through a wormhole has a certain amount of mass, and a wormhole can only survive so much mass passing through it before it collapses like a worn down bridge, right? So we refer to the amount of mass a wormhole has in a number of different ways. Um, and I'll go through them in just a moment here, but it's important to keep in mind that there are basically three stages, right? So stage one is over 50%. The wormhole, it'll say, the wormhole has not been reduced by ships passing through it. Stage two, also sometimes referred to as shrink, means that there is less than 50% of its mass left. And it will say, the wormhole has had its stability reduced by ships passing through it, but not to a critical degree. Okay. Stage three also sometimes referred to as crit, means that there is less than 10% of its mass left. And it will say, this wormhole has had its stability critically disrupted by the mass of numerous ships passing through and is on the verge of collapse. Now, people who live in wormhole space often will use specially fit 
ships, battleships, um, rolling sigils sometimes. Uh, so sigils, which are T1 Amar haulers, um, they will put these through holes um, in larger in larger wormholes. You could even use a carrier, right? And they do this to make the wormhole collapse. This is called rolling the hole or rolling. Now, underlined in green, the phrase says up to medium sized ships can pass through this wormhole. This tells us what size ship can fit through here. If you look in the ship tree, you can hover over the ships and it will tell you what size that ship is categorized as. As a general rule, if it says only the smallest ships can pass through this wormhole, we're talking about frigates and destroyers. If it says up to medium-sized ships, like the example here, that means battle cruisers, cruisers, and below, right? If it says larger ships can pass through this wormhole, that means battleships and smaller can go through. And if you find one that says very large ships can pass through this wormhole, that means everything up to and including carriers can pass through. So this is generally speaking, this is going to be C5s and C6s. So you can put capital ships through. Now, there are some bizarre and interesting exceptions that exist that I'm not covering, um, but I would just say there are some strange exceptions, uh, ships that you would not think can fit through a certain uh, sized hole will fit. For example, the Orca. The Orca will fit through a large hole. Underlined in blue, we see text that says wormhole Z971. Now this tells us one thing immediately and another thing that we can re reference in a database. The first is that this is the front side of the wormhole. Now imagine this like you're in a hotel and you have the numbers on the door or you know an apartment building with the numbers on the door, right? That's kind of what this is like. If you are just wormhole diving, it doesn't particularly matter whether you have the front side or the back side when you jump from K space into J space. But if you are going to live in wormhole space or spend considerable amount of time in wormhole space, it is good to pay attention to which side of the wormhole you are looking at because it can tell you whether this wormhole is a static or not. And we'll talk about statics in just a moment. The back side of a wormhole will say wormhole K162. Right? Okay. So let's talk about statics. All right. So, unlike in K space, wormhole systems don't stay connected to each other for very long. As I said, it's about a day or so, depending on the wormhole. Not all of them last 24 hours. Some of them are 16. Some of them are. Um, some of them are as short as six hours, um, really depends on which wormhole it is. Um, wormhole systems are like a single cube in a Rubik's cube. The connections are constantly shifting and a wormhole system might be connected to entirely different wormhole systems, uh, than they were, uh, yesterday, right? So what you find today is going to be different than the day before. 
Now, what wormholes do have consistently are a set of connections. These connections are called statics. As you can see in the example screenshot I have here, you have what you're looking at is a map of the old wormhole community home system called Innuendo. Innuendo is a C2 wormhole. This C2 wormhole has a C3 and a high sec static. This means that Innuendo will always have one wormhole that leads to a C3 and another wormhole that leads to high sec. Which C3 and which high sec system is connected through these wormholes will change every day. As some of you might have figured out already, um, every if if every connection changes on a regular basis every day, that means that you are going to have a wide connection of wormhole systems, which will look something like this. So this is an, this is an older uh, screenshot. This is a map from Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a tool that wormhole groups use to uh, keep track of the connections that wormholes have. Um, and so as you can see here, you have a, you have innuendo here, you have the high sec connection, you have the C3 connection, these are your statics, right? Um, and in WHC, they use nicknames for the statics. Um, in the old WHC, it was bacon and eggs. In Pavilion, it's Bravo and Echo for um, Bravo is the C3. Uh, Echo is the uh, high six static. And then, of course, you also have wandering connections like this 1v1. But we'll get into that. Now, wormholes can lead to basically anywhere in New Eden. So you can have wormholes that take you to, to JSpace, right? So they can go from JSpace to JSpace. They can also take you to NullSec. So it could be from JSpace to NullSec or, um, or a NullSec to another NullSec or from LowSec to NullSec, HighSec to NullSec, so on and so forth, right? Basically, any connection that you can imagine exists. Now, there are some weird rules about Pochvin. Pochvin is a unique kind of space created by the Triglavians after the war um, in um, after the war between Edencom and uh, the Triglavians. They are currently in a sort of cold war where there, there's not a whole lot of direct fighting except maybe in Pochvin. Occasionally you'll see um, you'll see different factions of NPCs in Pochvin fighting it out. Um, but as a general rule, Pochvin is sort of like in its own in its own little world, it has its own rules and things. So there are a lot of exceptions around Pochvin. We're not going to go into all the exceptions about Pochvin. That would be a whole class unto itself, all about Pochvin. Um, but the main thing here is that you can have static connections that take you to uh, a bunch of different places. You can have wormhole connections that are wandering, right? Wormholes that are not the static, but just spawn randomly, uh, can lead you to a variety of different places. Um,
and yeah so let's talk about wormhole classes okay so i've been saying c1 c2 c3 all that stuff and all i mean when i say c1 c2 and all that is we're talking about the class of wormhole system so we have a categorization system for talking about the kinds of wormhole systems that exist so as you can see from the breakdown i have here um, we have at the at the beginning we have class one right one static low is combat or and gas sites now when i say low isk combat ore and gas sites i don't mean that these are bad okay um, we are comparing we're comparing the isk that you make from combat sites or sites and gas sites in z1s to other combat ore and gas sites in say c5 and c6 right now, another thing I'd like to bring your attention to, right? So uh, there's a bit of a pattern here um, in what is called low class wormholes uh, or low class wormhole space. Uh, you have C1, C2, C3, C4, right? And the odd, the odd number class systems have one static. The even number class systems, so C2 and C4, have two statics right once you get to c5 and c6 it's always going to be one static and those statics never go to k space there is also a uh, class 12 which is triglavian uh, or technically it's pochvin but oftentimes we just refer to it as triclavian or trig. Uh, then there's class 13 or C13, um, which are shattered, shattered systems. They have several statics um, and a modest amount of isk in combat or in gas sites. Uh, they can also be run in small ships, so they're kind of fun that way. And then, of course, there is the one big exception to most of the rules about wormhole space, and that is a place called Thera. Thera is a wormhole system, and it is the only one that is given a name instead of a J number. So the other sort of interesting thing about Thero, it's a very dangerous place, I should say. Uh, lots of people live there. Lots of people go through there. Um, there is a lot of, I mean, I refer to it as Mad Max Fury Road, right? Like it's, it's an absolute, it's, it's absolute bonkers out there. People are always down to fight there people um, you know oftentimes there are certain wormholes that will be camped um, you know trying to catch people traveling through Thero so it's quite the place now wormhole life is a play style just like being in null sec it's a play style being in low sec is a play style being in high sec is a play style right the kind of content and the way that you engage with that content is oftentimes very much determined by where you as we say live in new eden right where do you spend your time? Where do you keep your 
where do you keep your training club, right? Is sort of where we refer to as the place that you live, right? But a unique thing about wormhole life is that you can go there, right? You can visit, you can spend time there, and then you can come back. If you don't want to live in wormhole space, you can what's called day trip, right? So for any of you who have, you know, jumped into a wormhole just to get some gas, uh, maybe you've run a couple sites, uh, maybe you've mined some ore, right? There's some valuable ore in wormhole space. Um, that's day tripping. And it's some of the most valuable isk you can find in the game for new players. All you explorers, if, you, if you're a new player and you want to make some money, exploring can be some of the highest isk you earn. Um, you could, uh, you know, gas sites, right? Wormhole gas is very valuable. Uh, this is another thing I recommend to new players, right? Um, get the gas skill book, train up gas harvesting, and then find a wormhole that has gas in it. Or find a wormhole system, you know, that has gas in it and uh, huff that gas, make lots of money doing it. Now, if you live in wormhole space, the cool thing about it is that you can always find new stuff. If you don't like, if you don't like the wormhole system that you're connected to, you just roll it and get a new and get a new uh, wormhole system. Um, you are also going to find some of the best PI in wormhole space because PI is determined by TrueSec and wormhole space is negative one. Uh, it means that you have the potential for some of the best PI uh, in New Eden. Um, wormhole space is also a place where you can find really good fights, um, both nano fights and uh, brawls, right? So big fleet brawls lots of fun. Um, in wormhole space, you don't have to worry about Concord. You don't have to worry about gate guns. Uh, it's kind of a lawless place, right? Um, so I live in wormhole space. My safety is always set to green, and yet I never run into the problem of, I'm going to shoot somebody. Oh, I have to remember to change my safety right? Like, that's not a thing that I have to worry about in wormhole space, because okay, Concord doesn't exist, and gate guns aren't a thing. What there is in wormholes is this cool thing called polarization. All right, so if you jump a wormhole and then jump back, you're going to see something like what I have here, in my presentation, right? It's this little orange circle, and um, you may recognize it. It's a timer, right? This is called a polarization timer. You can jump a wormhole and then jump the other side. But when you do that, you are now polarized on both sides. And you have to wait for your polarization timer to expire in order to jump it again. So here we have about, we're about halfway through the polarization timer. Polarization is kind of this unique thing, right? That is that creates a um, interesting way of escaping from danger or getting into danger if you're looking for a fight. Um, it is very much like, uh, you know, 
when you think of a wormhole like a door, right, you can only pass through that door on either side once, and then you have to wait, right, for your polarization. Now, polarization is five minutes. So you can jump the K162 side, and then you can jump the, say, like from the example earlier, the Z971 side, right? From our wormhole example earlier. So you've jumped both. Now you're on the K162 side of that wormhole. You have, you know, just under five minutes left on your polarization timer. Once that expires, you're going to jump through. And then on the Z791 side, you're still going to be polarized for maybe, you know, depending how long you wait to jump the wormhole, it could be, you know, 30, a minute, maybe even two minutes if you waited a while before jumping. So either side has its own polarization timer for each side. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the weather. Now, I refer to it as the weather because I think it's funny and because it's, um, and because when we talk about abyssals, we talk about it in terms of weather. And this is very much like weather um, in abyssal space. Um, but technically, it's called wormhole effects. So, you know, just to be clear. Now, so some wormholes have effects related to the type of system it is. Um, and sometimes this is referred to the weather, but again, most people will just say effect. Um, and it varies, right? So in C1, in a C1 uh, wormhole system, those effects are going to be very small. And they're going to have a very minor effect on your PvP or your PvE. Um, but once you get into the higher class wormholes, C5, C6, those system effects are so big. Like as you can see in my example here, this is a C5 pulsar. This is the effects of a C5 pulsar. They're so big that it can make a huge difference in a fight, whether you're doing, uh, you know, or if you're doing PvE, any kind of activity that you do in a wormhole space. The system effects can be uh, a huge difference in how you, in you engage with whatever it is that you're trying to do there. Um, It can be such a big difference that, you know, um, small ships in certain systems can beat larger fleets just because they have their ships fit to work with the system effects of that wormhole. Now, not every wormhole has system effects, right? Some have no effect. We call those vanilla, right? Vanilla wormhole systems. Um, many corporations build their doctrines, right? So the ships that they fly um, around the system effects, and they will even go so far as to avoid fighting in certain types of systems because of the impact it has on your ships and on the way you have to fly. regardless of what you do in wormhole space, whether you're just wormhole diving, right? Just day tripping to get some gas, maybe run some sites. Or if you're planning to live in wormhole space, it is important that you pay attention to the system effects, right? This is your metaphorical umbrella. Bring it.
All right, so we have no uh, we have no Q and A because there is no class. But if you do have questions, as I said before at the beginning, please feel free to leave a comment with your questions, and I will get to them as soon as I can, and I will answer as many as I can. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date on the videos that I publish. Um, I don't just do Eve University classes. I also put out uh, footage of fights in C5 wormhole space um, and all that good content. Um, and also maybe share this video with someone who is interested in learning more about wormhole space and wormhole mechanics. Until then, I wish you all the best. Fly dangerously, my friends.